f strings, which is short for formatted strings. So first, let's create a name. It's Tom, and age is fifty. And next, we want to create a string. My name is. My name is Tom, and my age is fifty. But we want to use the variables. So the normal way to do this would be x is equals to my name is space plus name oops plus name plus space so notice here we need to manage our spaces very carefully and my age is space plus string h so here we have to convert our h which is an integer to a string if not it will not work so here we print our x and we will get this string right in three Okay, so my name is Tom and my age is 50. So this is the normal way of adding strings together. So however, we can do this in a simpler way if we use formatted strings. So first let's comment this out. So here we are going to create a formatted string. So we add a f in front of our quotes, which makes it a formatted string. So my name is name and my h is h so notice here that in formatted strings we can use this curly braces to signify that this is a variable so this name is the same as this name and this h is the same as this h and if we print x we will get the exact same string so another cool thing that we can do with formatted strings is that we can do this so x is equals to f so name and we add an equal sign before we close the curly brace same thing with h we add an equal sign before we close the curly brace and if we print x we will get this so name is equals to tom and h is equals to 50. so this is a useful trick if we want to debug stuff duple unpacking so let's first start with a list so person is equals to Tom, uh, 50, and male. So basically it's name, age, and gender. So let's say we are given this list, and we want to extract the name, age, and gender. So usually we'll do it like this. So name is equals to person, 0, age equals to person, 1, and gender equals to person, 2. And if we print all of this, we will get our respective name, age, and gender. So we get Tom, 50, and male. However, with tuple unpacking, we can actually condense these three lines into one single line. So let's do that. So let's first comment this out. And we have name, age, gender is equals to person. So what's happening here is that name will be assigned to Tom age will be assigned to 50 and gender will be assigned to male so the catch here is that the number of variables here must be equal to the number of variables here however what if we have multiple things so let's say we have i don't know apple orange pear and we are only concerned with name age and gender and we don't actually want to deal with the rest so here we can actually add this so we have an asterisk and we have others. So what's happening here is that name will be assigned to Tom, age will be assigned to 50, and gender will be assigned to male. And others, which has an asterisk in front, will be assigned to everything else that is not specifically assigned. So if we print others, we will get Tom, 50 male, which is name, age, and gender. And this list will be others. Print, which is short for pretty printing. So let's say we have this long complicated dictionary. So D equals to apple orange pen. It has a bunch of numbers inside. So if we print D normally, we are going to get this. So we have this long line of stuff, which is not as human readable as we would want it to be. However, we can make use of print, which will automatically format it for us. So to use it, we just need to write this from pprint, import pprint, 
and pprint d so if we run it notice that everything is automatically formatted for us in a more human readable way so one interesting thing is that you can also control the indent so let's say indent is 4 and if we run this we will see that indent is equals to 4 list comprehension as well as set and dictionary comprehension so let's say we have uh, existing list fruits equals to apple orange pear so let's say we want to uppercase everything so we are going to get apple orange and then pear oops so let's first do this normally so we have another list called new and then we iterate through fruits so for fruit in fruits new a pen fruit and since we want it to be uppercase we just use the upper method and if we print new we will get this exact list and here we have it however using list comprehension we can actually condense these three lines into one line so I'm going to comment this out and new is equals to fruit for fruit in fruits so this is a list comprehension and this will just create an exact copy of fruits so right now it's just going to be apple orange pear however now we want to apply the upper so we apply it here dot upper and we will get apple orange pear in uppercase so the same works for set and dictionary however for set we use a curly brace so fruit upper for fruit in fruits and for dictionary and for dictionary we do the same with curly brace but we have a key value mapping here so let's say fruit upper equals to just fruit so if we print set one and dig one we will get this so this is our set that's created from our set comprehension and this is our dictionary that's created from our dictionary comprehension arcs and quarks so let's start with arcs so define test one so let's say it takes in x and asterisk arcs so let's print formatter string x equals and arcs equals so what's happening here is arcs with uh, asterisk beforehand will mean that te this function test1 will be able to take in as many positional arguments as possible and anything that is not caught by x will be caught in arcs so for example let's say test1 let's say i pass in only one thing and we will get x is 0 1 and arcs equals to nothing because x is assigned to 1 and arcs is assigned to nothing so however if we have 1 2 3 4 5 x will be assigned to 1 here and arcs will be assigned to everything else that is passed into the function so here arcs is a tuple containing 2 3 4 and 5 so quarks works kind of the same way but for keyword arguments so let's say i have a test 2 so x and double asterisk quarks so same thing let's just print x and quarks so f string x quarks so test 2 so here we are going to pass in x first so let's say x equals to 1 y equals to 2 z equals to 3 uh, a equals to apple so what's going to happen here is that x will be assigned to 1 and quarks will be assigned to all other keyword arguments over here so if we run this we can see that x is assigned to 1 and quarks will be a dictionary containing y, z and a the ternary operator so let's say we have a score is equals to some random number let's say 87 and we want to calculate a grade so let's just keep things simple so if score is more than equals to 90 grade is equals to distinction else if score is more than equals to 50 
grade is equals to pass and else grade is equals to fail so if we print this if we print grade we will get pass so what if I told you that we can actually replace this entire if else statement with the ternary operator so I'm going to comment this out so here we are going to use the ternary operator so grade is equals to distinction if score is more than equals to 90 else pass if score is more than equals to 50 else fail so if we run this again we will get the same result so distinction if score is more than 90 pass if score is more than 50 and else fail lambda functions so first let's start with a normal function so define add so add takes in x and y and we return the sum of x and y so if we were to call it it will be like this so it's 4 5 and if we run it we will get 9 so lambda functions are just functions but written in another way so I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to write the exact same function but using lambda so f is equals to lambda x comma y colon x plus y so what's happening here is that x comma y which happens before the colon is the input to the function and x plus y which is after the colon is the output of the function and this is equivalent to whatever the function returns so if I run this it's going to give me the same result so now let's explore why we even use lambda functions so let's define another function called apply so it takes in a function and it takes in an x and a y and it returns this so we call function using x and y so this is known as a higher order function which means that it takes in another function as an argument so let's call apply and if we do this at let's do 7 and 8 now we are going to get 15 so notice that apply takes in a function and this function happens to be at and what we do to 7 and 8 is we pass it into at so the thing about lambda functions is that it can be anonymous meaning that we can choose not to give it a name if we do not want to so instead of defining this we can simply take this and then we cut and paste here and it will still work pip and requirements.txt so pip is a command line tool that we use to install external python libraries so as we jump out from being a beginner in python we will most probably start using external libraries notably stuff like numpy or pandas at requests and so on so let's say we want to install a library called numpy so we can do this pip install numpy so if we run this command in our terminal python will automatically install numpy from some online repository for us similarly let's say we want to install another external library known as pandas so same thing pip install pandas so this will automatically install pandas from some online repository next let's talk about requirements.txt so requirements.txt requirements.txt is an actual text file that contains a bunch of stuff so numpy pandas maybe scikit-learn or something so when we deal with projects in python there's usually a whole list of requirements that you need to install and since we do not want to manually pip install every single requirement we usually use a requirements.txt such as this so the way to install dependencies from a requirements.txt is this pip install dash r requirements.txt so this will read from requirements.txt and you install everything here type hinting so let's define a normal function first so let's say we have a function called add 
and it takes in a and b and it just returns the sum of a and b so the thing about this function is that we can pass in arguments of any type so for example we want to pass in integers so let's say we add 4 and 5 and it will work so python so this is going to give us 9 however we can also pass in stuff like strings so hello and row and if we do this we are going to get hello world however in more complicated projects sometimes we do actually need to add in some kind of structure so let's say we intend for both a and b to be integers so we can use this thing called type hinting so a colon integer and b colon integer so this means that a should be an integer and b should be an integer too and since a plus b is an integer we can hint the return value to be an integer too so overall this means that a should be an integer b should also be an integer and the function should return an integer like this however do note that this does not enforce anything this does not enforce data types it highly recommends that a be an integer and it highly recommends that b be an integer and it highly recommends that a function should return an integer but it does not enforce anything so we can still pass in strings and you still it's still gonna work regular expressions or regex for short so first things first let's import re which is short for regular expressions so note that we do not need to install this as this is part of the python standard library so regular expressions actually allow us to do powerful string matching so let's say we have a sentence so we have apple orange pear pineapple and durian and let's say we want all words containing apple so we can do this using regex so print re dot find all and then we pass in two things so sentence so this is our sentence here and this is our regular expression so in order to find all words containing apple we can pass in a regular expression like this backslash w this thing apple backslash w this one and question mark so if we run this we will get every single word that contains apple so notice that apple and pineapple contains apple and therefore they are extracted however orange pear and durian does not contain apple so they are ignored so as to how to create these regular expressions this is another whole chapter on its own